It started with the February election and uh, the thing to remember is Fianna Fáil have been in power for 16 years, an uninterrupted stretch in power. And it looked to the opposition parties as if there was no way of them ever getting into government as long as de Valera was there because he didn't approve of coalition governments. He wouldn't invite any other party in with him. So it gradually began to dawn on the opposition parties that the only way they could get themselves sitting around uh, the cabinet table was to come together. And the uh, government that came together was absolutely extraordinary. It had five different parties plus a bunch of independents. And uh, the parties ranged from Fine Gael, which, uh, of course, was uh, fairly right-wing at the time, pro-Commonwealth. Uh, there was not one but two Labour parties because the National Labour Party had split from the main Labour Party over uh, allegations of communist infiltration, if you can believe that. There was a new radical Republican Party led by uh, Sean McBride, who you can see there uh, in, in, in the screen, uh, very left-wing in terms uh, of the politics of the time, and pro-Republican. And then there was... A a farmers' party, Clown the Saloon. So between them, uh, they almost had a majority, but they didn't quite have a majority, so they needed a bunch of independents as well, uh, led by James Dillon. So there were six independents, some of them uh, uh, slightly on the bizarre side of the political spectrum, but uh, Dillon managed to persuade them that it would be a terribly good idea if they uh, joined uh, supporting the government and put him in cabinet. So it was the, the, the most diverse government that there ever has been in this country, basically everybody except Fianna Fáil. So it starts, I suppose, with the anything but de Valera. This time it's anything but Sinn Féin bringing Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil together. But what made it work? Um, well, you need a glue to hold a government together. And I think at the start, uh, there was that dislike of de Valera. It wasn't just political self-interest. They knew they couldn't get into government uh, uh, with de Valera, but they also disliked de Valera intensely. He was the man who dominated Irish politics in the first half century of independence. And they disliked him, interestingly, for different reasons. Fine Gael, uh, particularly Fine Gael leader uh, Dick Mulcahy, hated de Valera. They held him responsible for the civil war. McBride and the Republicans in Clown Republica, on the other hand, uh, disliked de Valera because he'd cracked down on the IRA uh, during the Second World War. So they had different reasons for disliking him, but they were united in that dislike. So that was the start of it. Um, the other thing uh, that they managed to do is that they actually managed to come to an agreement on policy. Now, this is not like a programme for government uh, that we'd have today, which yeah. goes on for pages and pages. This was 10 points. It was a single sheet of paper, 10 points. But they were things that they could all unite on, uh, things like getting rid of unpopular taxes that had been introduced in a supplementary budget, uh, making it easier for people to qualify for old age widows and orphans' uh, pensions, tackling TB, uh, introducing a social security plan. All of these things they were able to agree on, and that gave them uh, a platform to uh, go ahead. And because, of course, they were facing a united opposition in the Dáil Chamber, uh, the pressure from Fianna Fáil uh, made them knit together even more because they were well aware that if they didn't hang together, they would certainly hang separately. So adversity can prove a, a certain kind of glue or the, or the threat of adversity. And it is a government that won its place in the history books for all its hodgepodge nature. It certainly did. Um, you know, most people, when it started, most people uh, expected it to last perhaps six months. It actually uh, lasted for three and a half years. And it's best known, I suppose, for two things. One is the Declaration of the Republic, uh, by the Taoiseach John A. Costello, um, and the other is the mother and child scheme, uh, the, the crisis over that. Most people think that the mother and child scheme led to the government collapsing. Actually, it, it hang, hung on for another couple of months. It was actually a row over the price of milk, would you believe, that led to the, uh, the government falling. So it did manage to do quite a lot. And the interesting thing as well was um, the Taoiseach, of course, wasn't the leader of the main party in the government, Fine Gael. Uh, some of the other parties refused to serve under Richard Mulcahy. He'd been the uh, commander-in-chief of the National Army during the Civil War, responsible for the executions uh, of anti-treatyites. So they wouldn't serve under him. So they found a solution in a compromise choice, John A. Costello, former Attorney General, hadn't been involved in the Civil War. And his personality also helped to, uh, to keep the, uh, the government together because even people who fell out with him later, like Noel Brown, said he was very fair in Cabinet. He let everybody have their say and they always sought consensus. It remains to be seen, David, how many members of the 33rd, though, will have learned from the example of history. Thank you very much indeed.